now at this time we are going to pray for areas of God's guidance. My God. Areas. Yes. That is how God guides us. How God guides us. How? The Bible says that the word of God is a, is a more sure word of prophecy. And in the scriptures, God guided people. You see, look at Isaiah 58, 11 again. Isaiah 58, 11. The Lord shall guide thee continually. The Lord shall guide thee continually. You have to ask yourself, how I mean, if God is going to guide you continually, how will he guide you? It's an important question to ask. It's a very important question to ask. How does God guide, how does God guide us? And I'm good, we are going to pray about five areas or five ways of God's guidance. If God will guide you, you see, you see, when he guides you, your bones become fat. Your soul is satisfied. Your life becomes like a watered garden. And your waters never fail. But how does God guide? How does God guide? We are going to pray into our lives. These five areas. Why? So that we will be sensitive to his guidance in these areas. Anyone who misses God's guidance in these areas will miss a certain blessing. And the first area we are going to pray is that we are going to pray for the guidance of God's word. His word itself guides us it guides you to the fattening of your bones. Yes. It guides you till your life is like a watered garden. Hallelujah. Anyone who sets aside God's word is setting aside major blessings. Yes. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable. Watch it. Scripture is profitable for doctrine. That's how God guides us through scriptures. For doctrine. For reproof. For correction. For instruction in righteousness. So God instructs you in righteousness. God corrects you. God reproves you through his word. So anyone who is not sensitive to the English letters in God's word or whatever language, the Bible is a guide. Psalm 119 verse 105 Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The touch light God uses to guide you to that girl to marry is the word of God. The word of God. The word, the Bible itself is a source of light. Anyone who plays with the Bible is inviting darkness. Darkness. And in this beautiful year, you don't want to joke with darkness. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That is, the word of God, see, a lamp unto my feet is that it shines around your immediate area. And then a light unto my path, that is, your far, it also shines into your tomorrow, your next year, your next six months, 
you, all the word of God, oh. it, it is relevant for your life today and next 10 years. And we are going to pray for the guidance of God's word. As we pray, you are going to respect God's word more. Oh, I don't know what my life would have been like had it not been for the word of God. Without the word of God, I have no life. I receive counsel. I receive correction. Correction means that I was going this way and it was wrong and the word corrected me. So I'm now on the right path. Hallelujah. Yes, the word of God. Hallelujah. And so today, we are going to ask the Lord to guide our lives. That's why our brother sang, I am weak, but thou art mighty. I am weak, I am weak, but thou art mighty. You are mighty. I am weak, I am weak, but thou art mighty. You are mighty. How is God mighty? I mean, what is the context of God's might? His word. Yes. The Bible says that he has lifted his word above his name. The name Jehovah, the name Yahweh. The name Elohim. The word of God is above his name. Powerful. So when you connect properly with the word of God, you will have peace. He will guide you to peace. He will guide you away from shame. Yes. He will guide you. He said, Thou hast magnified. Psalm 138 verse 2. Thou hast magnified thy name, thy word, above all, you see that word there, all thy name. Elohim, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Sabbath, De Jehovah, what? Uh, Rafi, Jehovah, Shikenu, all these names. The Bible is above those names. So when you work with the Bible, it is a powerful guide. It guides you into a peaceful marriage. It guides you into relationships. It guides you into prosperity. Joshua 1 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mightest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then, for then, for then, for then, thou shalt make thy way prosperous. So the word of God answers all your questions about prosperity. Your life is the way it is because you are not respecting God's word. If you read Proverbs and it shows you how a little sleep, a little slumber will cause your poverty to come. You'll be afraid to sleep. Your poverty, not my poverty. Your own will come. Yes. Everybody has his poverty. Everybody, everybody, Zuckerberg has his poverty. Yeah, Donald Trump has his poverty. Uh, mention the names. Which who, who is the rich man you know? Yourself. Elon Musk has his poverty. Uh, who else? Putin has his poverty. <laughs> but some people, their poverty will never come. Even if they live. Prince Charles has his poverty. Yes. Yes. The Queen of England has her poverty. But some people will live for 200 years and their poverty will never come. Have you not seen Prince Charles' brother? Both of them are millionaires. So I'm telling you, Prince Charles has lent his brother about 7 million pounds to solve his legal issues. His brother, who is also a millionaire, is now begging for money. Yes. His poverty has come. Why? Because the Bible says that by means of a whorish woman, a man is reduced. You are going to re respect the word of God. The Bible, every verse. The means word of God. A man is reduced from, from Madeira cake to a piece of bread. One day I saw a goat eating bread. Then I said, no, the world is changing. The world is changing. A goat is eating bread. 
<laughs> yes. So he said, there are two millionaires, oh, two princes, Prince Charles, Prince Andrew, but one is still a millionaire and one is now receiving loans. All his money is, he has spent all within one month. Because the Bible, the words in the Bible are supposed to keep you. We are going to pray for the guidance. If you play with the Bible, you will play with your destiny. It guides you. It corrects you. It reproves you. It's a light. And everyone under the sound of my voice, you have to respect God's word. Yes. When you read the Bible, you read it well. There is nothing frivolous in the in the Bible. You play with an instruction, huh? You are playing with your destiny. If the Bible says that don't fornicate. It says don't lie. It says don't steal. He says you must not forsake the assembling together of the brethren as the manner of some is. The Bible says that don't, don't break the fellowship of the church. Don't, don't stop church. Don't stop church. Hebrews 10.25 Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. All these English words, you may think that it's just words that are being played around, but they are relevant to your destiny. Whether your son is going to turn out to, into a thief or a homosexual or a drug addict will depend on these English words. Not forsaking. But you will never know till you are knowing it. We are going to pray that Lord, let your word guide me. Let your word lead me. When you read the Bible and you see a mistake somebody made in the Bible, don't wait so you have also made the same mistake to le learn from the person's mistake but the Bible says David obeyed God in every area except in the matter of Uriah the Hittite yes then you will realize that God takes note when you are approaching somebody's wife because it's not just the wife oh by approaching somebody's wife, you are, you are making yourself into a murderer. But you will know till you have finished murdering a man. Yes. So as you are there, if you are getting feelings for somebody's wife, then you remember you read the Hittites. That's the, clap your hands for the Bible. Word of God. The word of God. We are going to pray. Every standing, every standing, we are going to commit ourselves to the power, to the wisdom, to the glory, to the grace, to the mercy, to the infinite blessings of the word of God. Father, guide me through your word. Guidance through the word of God. Guidance through the word of God. Begin to pray right now. Today, 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 today. Amanu mama, Amanu mama, Amanu mama, Angala baba, Rama mama, La baba. Your way, your way, your way. Let me fear you through your way. Put it in me. Let it guide me towards, away from, into, out of. Pray. The guidance of the word of God. The guidance of the word of God. Every verse, every chapter, every story, the word of God, it guides you. It guides you. How shall a man cleanse his ways? 
by paying heed unto the word of God. How can a man cleanse his ways by paying heed to your law? Madababa, Rabazata, Sine Manunama, Ramamaya Galababa, it guides you away. Mamaya, Rabada, Ramalaba, Psalm 119, verse 9. How shall a man cleanse his life, cleanse his way by taking him according to your word? Lebao, Labo, Mendo, 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 Your word, your word, your word. The Bible says you must not stop church, and you are stopping church. Yo, Marigo Lava. Rababa, your way, your way, your way. How shall a young man cleanse his way? How shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking him. Yes, your way. It guides. It guides. Psalm 119, verse 105. Thy way. Thy way. It's a lamp unto my feet. And the lamp light unto my path. Pray. Imoba. Guidance, guidance through your word. 
Yes. Father, we thank you for your word. What your word says. If only we would hearken and obey, it will guide. Yes, your word is a doctrine. It reproves us. Yes. It rebukes us. Oh, yes. And by that rebuke, word. we are corrected. Oh, yes. And then it corrects us. Thank you, Lord. Your word. Not a prison officer. Your not a policeman. No. Your, word. your word. It tells you that what you did was wrong. Your word. Your word says, honor your father and your mother. Oh, yes. No matter what the father has done, your you word. honor. Word. The word is guiding your you in your, in your ways. Oh, I remember the words of Peter, the disciple. So we have toiled here all night and I've caught nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, nevertheless, at thy word, we've toiled all night and I've taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Ha, look at the next verse. And when they had this done, when they had allowed the words of Jesus, which we also have in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Revelation and portions of Acts, they enclose a great multitude of fishes and their nets break. Is it possible that your poverty has something to do with your disregard for God's word? Is it possible? Is it possible? That the state of your life, the state of your life, the state of your marriage. Is it possible that the confusion in your marriage is because either or both of you are not ready to succumb to the wisdom of God's word? Yes. You joke with God's word to your own peril, as somebody will say. Lift your hands again. And let's commit ourselves to the guidance. It will guide us. To guide you to forgive. Yes. Forgive. No matter what he has done, forgive. Because that unforgiveness is bringing hypertension, diabetes, cancer. Can you lift all over the world? Let's lift up our hands and have respect and regard for the word of God. Respect and regard for the word of God. Respect and regard for the word of God. Respect and regard. Respect and regard for the word of God. When they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes. Your prosperity is directly connected to your respect for the word of God. Lift your hands and receive that grace. That grace. Masatuda Baba. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to pray for the guidance. The first one, just five areas and we are closing. The first one is the guidance of the word of God. The next one is that we are going to pray for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Clap your hands for Jesus. The guidance of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21. The unseen presence. Yes, the invisible presence of God. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. When you turn to the right and when you turn to the left, thine ears shall hear a word behind thee. Meanwhile, when you turn, there's no one standing there. But it's the voice of the Holy Spirit. The voice of the Holy Spirit. A voice behind you oh, yes. saying, this is the way. This is the way. This is the way. Yes. The Holy Spirit guides us. He shows us the way. He literally shows us the way. In Acts chapter 16, verse 6, when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. Verse 7. After 
they were come to Mysia. They assayed to go to Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. The Holy Ghost can guide you to where you must go. He can stop you from going to a place you must not go. Yes. As you are doing visitation, he will guide you to a sister to minister to her. And he will stop you from going to a certain sister because what she's wearing weren't good at the time. Show your back with other accessories. Help me, Jesus. Say Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Remember, they were going for outreach. Outreach. He stopped them. He stopped them from going to Bithynia. They were trying to go to Asia. He said, you are not going. But you see, the thing is that if you can't hear, I want to highly recommend the book, Art of Hearing. The Art of Hearing. Second edition by Bishop Dagwood Mills. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah, you will see the cover on the screen. The art of hearing. But I, I see if you read it, you will learn how the Holy Ghost guides you. He speaks, he whispers, he guides you. And we are going to pray right now that you too you will be sensitive to the voice. He said, he said, you shall hear a voice behind you. Mm. But when you turn, there's no one there. Mm. Mm. You are alone. Oh one night I was sleeping. Deep. And I heard loudly a, a, a voice called my name. Bishop Ogo. I got up. Mm. I knew what God wanted me to do. I knew it. He guides you. He, guides. he will guide you. Amen. He will guide you Amen. away from a place. Yes. He will guide you to move away. Mm. He will say, separate yourself. My God. He will say, jo how did Philip meet the eunuch? Mm. The Holy Ghost the Holy moved Lord. him. Mm. And he, he said, go near. Go and sit with him in the chariot. Lift your hands. Oh. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, move me now. Make my life whole again. Spirit, move over me. Over me. Over me. Spirit move ooh, over me. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, move me now. Make my life whole again. Anybody whose life is
Spirit. Guide me. Holy Ghost. Father, I pray for the guidance of your Spirit by day, by night, in the city, in the village, in the house, in the office, in the school, in town. Begin to pray right now. Holy Spirit.
Receive sensitivity. Pray now for sensitivity. Pray that you be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. Pray now for sensitivity. Pray now for sensitivity. Thy ear shall hear the word. Thy ear shall hear the word. Say, this is the way. vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him saying come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he has seen the vision immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel to them. Beautiful. They were sure that through that vision they had, the Lord wanted them to go to Macedonia. 
I am announcing to you that as you pray, you see, when you pray about these supernatural virtues, they become a, a normal part of your life. Remember that supernatural things can become natural to you. Wow. Oh, yes. Yes. Matthew chapter 1, verse 20. Wow. Matthew chapter 1, verse 20. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. In a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yes. This man would have divorced his wife. How can he be married to a woman who says she's pregnant and will not point to the man who impregnated her and say the spirit? I don't want you. I'm, I'm, I'm actually afraid of you. Any man in this situation would have behaved like Joseph. But through a dream, I pray that a dream will guide you spectacularly in an area of your life. Yes. An angel appeared and said, Joseph, fear not to take this one. Which means that there are also some women you must be afraid to marry. You must fear to marry. But this one, don't be afraid. Yes. It's not every girl you marry. There are some women, when you see them, you must be afraid of even looking at them. I don't know what you are going through. Look, I'm telling you, there have been major landmarks, junctions of my life that I, in fact, no voice on earth could have helped me. But a dream, a dream, I can, I can count and number them. I can arrange them, the timeline, a dream. You are receiving the ministration of Hallelujah. dreams and visions. Amen. Amen. They guide you. Yes. They guide you. Yes. You cannot be. You see, turn your Bibles to Joel. Chapter 2. Verse 28. Speaking of the last days, it shall come to pass that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. So, dreams and visions are a direct effect of the spirit being poured on you. So, anybody who doesn't have visions and dreams is bereft of the spirit. Yes. Some of you, your dreams are just a cow wearing sunglasses chasing a mouse. I mean, bizarre. The one you finish, you call your pastor to explain such a dream to you. The last time somebody asked me such a question, I said, Pray to God to show you the interpretation. I'm not Daniel. I will pour out my spirit. Receive the pouring of the spirit. I receive it. And in that spirit, when it is poured on you, you have dreams. Amen. You see visions. Amen. You see what look at the verse again. Look at the verse again. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Receive that spirit upon your flesh. I receive it. Yes. Spirit can fall on flesh. Mm. There are many people whose flesh has not interacted with the spirit of God. So when you see the flesh, it is tingling with fornication. May the spirit fall on your flesh. Amen. As I made the spirit fall on your flesh. Amen. And you too, when you see a flesh without the spirit, you must see that this flesh is not normal flesh. The spirit can be poured on flesh. 
and look at it. And the and your sons and your daughters My shall God. prophesy. My God. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. So these are young, whether you are young or old, boy or girl, in, in Christ there is neither male nor female. This is Joel before Christ came. In Christ there is neither male. Young men, young women, old men, old women. Either you are dreaming or you are visioning. So either you are dreaming or you are visioning. I declare in the name of Jesus that you are beginning to have visions Amen. about your work, about your relationships, about your ministry. Have dreams about people, clear dreams, not this type of Tom and Jerry dreams, proper dreams that when you wake up, you know, yes, you have been somewhere that you have met God, receive the power of dreams. We are going to pray. Our Father, Father after, today, after today, when I sleep, when I sleep may, I may, I things, may I see things. May I see things. May I see things. May I see things about my tomorrow, may I see things about my next year, may I see things. about my left, my may right. The unseen things must be seen through see dreams. I'm saying that God guides. Otherwise, there will, there will be no story like Mary and Joseph. He was contemplating mm. divorce. Mm. And rightly so. My God. Yeah, because we are human beings. Mm. You can't see beyond a certain distance. Which man will, will believe a story that you are, you are a woman, you are pregnant. Six months, three months. And when we ask you, you can't point to any man. You say the Holy Spirit. I mean, honestly. Even after this story that we know of in the Bible, if it still happens to you, you will still won't believe it. <laughs> you didn't hear me. I said, if your wife gets pregnant even today, that we now know of Virgin Mary, and your wife gets pregnant, I mean, before after your wedding, you've not touched her. I, I said, uh, after your engagement, you've not touched her, and she has missed her period, even today. And when you ask her, she says that it's the Holy Ghost. Will you believe it? No. Ah. How much more Joseph, who had not seen, who had not experienced any Mary before in any Bible. And he is the one living out that story. Rightly so. But through a dream. Through a dream. His ways were corrected. What the word of God may not do, what the Holy Ghost may not do, may a dream step in, receive the intervention of dreams. I bless you with dreams and visions. I open your eyes for dreams and visions. When you are asleep, may your eyes be open. Begin to clap your hands and pray for dreams and visions. The guidance of dreams and visions. Hey, 